Okay, all right, well, good morning everybody and welcome to Chair Yoga. I'm so grateful for the opportunity uh, to share this practice and be part of this practice with each and every one of you. If you're following along on the playlist, it's number 36 today, so go ahead and get that started. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and already start forward into our chairs. So go ahead and sit forward into those chairs and let's find a nice comfortable position on these chairs to where our knees are hovering above the ankles. Feet flat on the floor if you're able, and a nice tall posture from the crown of our head through to our tailbones, through to our tailbones. We'll begin with our hands at heart center, and we'll begin with a nice deep inhale and exhale as we move our arms. Fan them up nice and tall, and just connect that movement with the breath, or connect that breath with the movement inhale. And then exhale, bring those hands together and right back to heart center. Continue to do that, continue to do that. And just applying that breath to the movement, moving nice and slow, nice and slow to begin with and making sure that inhale is nice and long and that exhale is nice and complete. We've talked in the past, yoga is the journey of the self and through the self and to the self. And that's not necessarily about finding yourself because reality is, is you're not lost. We just sometimes get caught up in our thoughts, we get caught up in our activities, we get caught up in the chaos of life. But when we think about ourselves, it's not selfish to think about ourselves, it's not selfish to focus on ourselves, because the way we treat ourselves is an outward reflection of the way we treat others. Give me a couple more right here. And so we think about self maybe perhaps in a different way. Of course, we think about self-love. What's our own self-image? One more time. We think about self-care and things like yoga and exercise and eating rights. Good. And now let's take that right hand and just bring it up and hold it up there. And just take the left hand, grab onto that right wrist and just a nudge, just a nudge, just a little bit so we can stretch that right side of our body. Breathe deeply here. But we can also think about self in terms of self-awareness. Just discovering where we're at here in the now. Self-development and self-discovery leading to perhaps self-improvement. Good. Let's bring that right hand down. And then same thing on the other side. Bring that left hand up. And of course, the image of ourselves, self-trust and self-risk, self-respect and self-worth. And of course, yoga is probably the ultimate practice, one of those only practices I can see that's really about the celebration of who we are, embracing who we are, accepting who we are right here, just on our mats. Good. Let's come back to heart center and inhale and fan those arms up nice and tall, a nice gentle twist to the left side. As we stay nice and tall, let's exhale and face the left. Inhale up. And exhale and face to the right. Keep going, keep going. And keep alternating. Good. A little bit more pace to what we're doing and just continue with that deep inhale and that exhale. That breath is so pivotal to our practice. That breath keeps us right in the moment of our practice, keeps us right in the presence. There's nowhere else we really need to be except right now, right here. And just focused on how we're moving. Concentrating on the postures and nothing else. Inhale and exhale. Let's go one more time to the left, one more time to the right. Sitting tall, sitting tall, just loosening up through our lower back. And exhale on to the right. Very nice. Let's bring our hands and just rest them on our laps, facing front and center. Working some shoulders just a little bit. Bring those shoulders up nice and high and then roll them down and away from your ears, as big as small as you want with those circles, and as high or low as you want in terms of a lift. So just think about those shoulder blades as we roll them up and back, trying to squeeze those shoulder blades together in the middle of our back, getting those shoulder blades to retract just a little bit. Whatever direction you're going, go ahead and switch directions on those shoulders. Be sure to draw those shoulders down and away from our ears. Let them relax down as we come down and then drive them up, squeeze them up 
through our trapezius, our traps. Good. All right. Let's come back to stillness right here. Take our right foot and extend it out, and we'll do some dynamic folds. So we'll inhale up nice and tall, reach nice and high, and then exhale, and just fold those arms through, and just reaching down towards that leg. Good, keep on going. Next inhale, reach right back up, and then exhale and gently fold forward. Staying right here on this right side, keep going, keep going. Inhale, lift, and exhale down. Perfect. We get two more on this side. Just begin to just continue to warm up those legs and let those hamstrings lengthen. Those muscles connecting into our glutes and lower back. Excellent. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Good. And then on the next exhale, that left leg is long. We inhale up nice and tall. And exhale in forward fold. Good stuff right here. Keep going. Keep going. We'll go two more on this side. Just allowing ourselves to just reach into those legs. Reach into those legs using that breath. Inhale, hands together, and right back to heart center. Let's bring those legs out just a little bit wider, a little bit wider. And we're just gonna do a seated forward fold. Inhale up nice and tall. Exhale, long spine as we come on down. Nice long arms out to the side. Keep that spine long, keep that spine long, and then drop the crown of your head. Interlock those arms and rock side to side. Then drop the crown of your head towards the ground. Release that tension in our jaw and in our face. And just use the power of those feet and those legs to support yourself right here. Let's make sure that chair's not spinning out on you behind you. That you got good, solid, and secure foundation of that chair behind you. Excellent. Let's take another couple breaths right here. Deep inhales and exhales. Just relax and release. Very nice. Keeping the legs wide. Let's fan those arms up nice and high. And right back to heart center. And then we're going to do some holding twists, okay? So bring that right hand to the outside of that left leg and then left hand onto the chair and just rotate. Keep the legs wide. Breathe. And then exhale back to center. Take an inhale and then exhale to the right. So left hand in front of that. Right leg, right hand onto the chair, and sit tall and breathe. And let's exhale right back to center. Very nice. Come on out of our chairs. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to come onto our chairs. We're going to turn them all the way around, take that block and set it on the chair. So we have proximity of where it is at, and we're gonna start with cats and cows. Cat and cows, okay? Cat and cows. So we can, we can either do cat and cows with our hands on the chair or our hands up on our laps. I'm just moving sideways so you can see that. Feet about shoulder width, slightly wider, yeah, okay? Either way we're doing it, feet uh, shoulder width are slightly wider. Okay, so we're gonna come down and we're gonna look up and bring our tailbone up and inhale. And then exhale, look down, and tuck our tailbone tucker. If your hands are on your hips, same idea. Inhale, look up, and exhale, press those hands into the quads or into the chair, round through that spine. Inhale, look up, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and exhale, look down, round through the spine. Good, then begin adding a little bit of pace to that, making sure that breath is still supporting the move. Let's do that two more times, either direction. Just begin to engage that core a little bit. Loosen up through that lower back and spine. Awesome. Let's all find the chair now. Let's all find the chair. We're gonna take our right hand forward and left foot back. Lengthen our body. Lengthen our body from our fingertips back to our heel or toes. Doesn't matter if it's pointed or not. And 
and try and keep our shoulders and hips square to the chair and the mat or ground beneath us. From here, sunbirds, we're going to exhale, tap the right hand to the left knee, and extend and reach back out. Good. Exhale together, inhale as we reach. Okay, and then as we continue to reach, add maybe a little bit more lift. Thumb a little bit higher, heel a little bit higher in the back. Try and feel that into your lower back with that heel lifting, and the upper and middle part of your back with that thumb lifting. Okay? Don't force it, but just try to feel something a little extra right there. Excellent. Let's do it two more times. And last one. Good. Keep that left foot up into the sky. Bring both hands down towards the ground. Tap that left toe onto the ground. And then bring that left toe. I'm going to face the front now. Just so you can see that. Tap that left toe all the way out to the side. And then bring it up and over behind that right foot to the outside of that right foot. Okay? Tap it out. And tap it out. Good. Up and over. I'm just draw on that half circle or that half moon, that crescent moon shape with your foot. And then as we do this, start to notice the sides of our body engaging. That space between our ribs and hips working. Those external obliques. Tap and tap. Shoulders right above those hands, pushing straight down in our chair. And one more time. And let's bring both feet back to that neutral position. Okay. All right. Same thing, other side. This time, left hand extends forward, right heel back. I'm just going to stay facing you this time. I know the chair is in the way. Okay. So, right heel's back. And then on the exhale, we're going to tap left hand to right knee. Exhale and inhale and extend right back. Press that foot to the back of the room. And again, extend and lengthen your body. Focus on the length. How far can you reach? Fingertips to toes or heels. Keeping square, shoulders, hips to the chair and the ground beneath us. Inhale, reach, exhale, crunch. How about two more right here? Awesome. And then that right foot's going to stay up off the ground, both hands on to the chair, and then take that right toe, tap it out to the right, and then up and over to the left to the outside of that foot, okay? Still keeping hips and shoulders square to that chair, but we're tapping out, and then reaching into the sides of our body, engaging, engaging the sides of our body. Awesome. Keep tapping, keep going out and over. Let's go one more time right there. Excellent. Set both feet about hip distance apart. Fan those arms up nice and tall. And exhale to our heart center. Okay. Some side bends here. Let me just put this chair back. Let me just put this chair back. Side bends. Good. So we're going to inhale those hands up nice and tall. Nice and tall. And just like we did, left hand onto that right wrist, give it a nice nudge, a nice stretch. Okay, a little pull on that arm, pull and feel it through your shoulder and down the side of those ribs and into the hips. Okay, pressing our hips to the right side, weight of our body shifting into that right foot. Just really open up that right side. As that weight shifts, you can almost feel but that left foot's gonna lift up off the ground. You don't have to lift it, but it puts all the weight into that right side. Okay, inhale back nice and high, and take that right hand, grab onto the left wrist, same thing, left side, and give a nice little nudge right there. Deep breaths, sit nice, still, that three-part breath. Reach through the shoulder. Give as much tension as you want. Drive in the hips to the left. Weight of our body into that left foot, so much so that maybe that right foot can hover. Now 
standing. Okay, I'm just going to come at an angle here. Let's come right back in front. Make sure we're right in front of our chairs. You probably were right there anyway. Feet about hip distance apart. Hands back to heart center. Inhale up nice and tall. And exhale and forward fold. And as we come on down, either stop at the chair or the block on the ground or the ground. Wherever your range of motion or your mobility will take you today. And as we get here, just allow yourself to just relax and release just like we did earlier when we were seated and just folding forward and hanging there let the crown of the head fall let the space the face be uh, expressionless and relax through the jaw through the teeth give a nice sway side to side if you want to lock those arms a little sway side to side and then we're going to add a little twist here hand on the block or on the chair. I'm going to show it from on the chair. Deep bend in that right knee, which means we're going to lift our left hand up toward the sky. Okay, so reach that left hand either to the hip or up toward the sky. Just open up and breathe. Okay, deeper bend in that right knee. Left leg without locking that joint. Still a soft left knee, but allowing us to reach in deeper into that left hip and into our lower back. You can see that even in this pose, and I'm still able to just talk normally. This one has one an opportunity to kind of constrain that breath. And so find this position for you to where you can still talk normally. Okay, that might be just to open up this much. Okay, as long as you can still talk normally. If you're up here and you're like, I can't barely breathe, then come out of it just a little bit. Good. Let's do the same thing other side. Left hand on the chair or on the block. Deeper bend in that left knee and raise that right hand up toward the sky. And stretch up top two to our chest and shoulders. A little squeeze between our shoulder blades. Reach, find that point where you're still breathing freely. There might be just a little tinge of constraint to that breath, but it shouldn't be something that's blocking that breath from happening. Exhale, and bring both hands down. Let's fan those arms up nice and tall, and come right back to heart center. Okay, I'm just gonna shift the chair to the side now. Our sun A's, let's go through our flows. Here we go, feet about hip distance apart. Okay, or shoulder width apart, your choice. Inhale, shoot those hands up nice and tall. Exhale, and forward fold, long spine on the way down. On our next inhale, hands on the chair, nice flat back. Straight line from the crown of our head through to our tailbone. Try to feel that. Just imagine you're sitting that tailbone on the back wall. Feel that stretch up the back of the legs through the glutes. Take a nice big inhale here, and on the exhale, step those feet back one at a time. Draw those ears between those arms. And press those hips to the back wall as if, again, you're trying to sit on that wall. Okay, nice stretch between those shoulders. Both feet on the ground, heels to toes. Maybe a little rock to this. Feel that downward dog. Good. So on our next inhale, we'll step forward towards that chair. Exhale and bend those knees. Inhale, sweep nice and tall. Then exhale to heart center. And we'll add some speed to it now as we inhale up and exhale and fold. Inhale up to flat back, exhale, step back, downward dog. Inhaling, step forward, exhale, bend those knees. Inhale, reach nice and tall and exhale, back to heart center again. Keep going. Inhale, reach for it and exhale, come down. Inhale up to that flat back. Make sure we get that flat back and exhale, step back, downward dog. On the inhale, come forward, there we go. Exhale into those knees, and then reach for it nice and tall. Exhale, heart center. Keep going as we inhale and reach, and exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Now, flat back is usually something I just kind of try to breeze through, but I still try to get to that nice, good form flat back. Okay, and then exhale, downward dog. Awesome. Inhale as we step forward. Exhale, bend those knees, sweep up nice and tall, right back to heart center. 
Inhale, reach forward and exhale down. Inhale, up, flat back. And exhale, come on back. Good. Inhale as we rock forward, step forward, sink into those legs. Inhale, sweep it up nice and tall. And exhale, heart center. Let's do that one more time. Inhale and exhale. Good. Inhale up and exhale. Press it back. On the inhale, we step forward. Come forward. Sink into those legs. Sweep it up. Sweep it up. And finish right at our heart center. Perfect. Okay. Let's bring that chair to the left side. Seat back facing in. Our first standing sequence. We'll start with warrior one posture. Warrior one posture. Right foot forward and left foot back. Okay. Both feet on the ground, heels to toes, left foot pointing just slightly out. So try and feel that whole foot on the ground, not the inside with the pinky toe up off the ground, but the whole foot pressed in. Make sure that knee's going towards our pinky toes and not caving in. Try to see at least your big toe and your second toe. If you can see your outside toes or all your toes, then that knee's caving in. That's a surefire way to know that that's happening. So drive those knees out, big toe and second toe at most. Arms can be up, shoulders rolled down and away from those ears. Feel a nice stretch on the inside of that left hip into the top of the quad, and it's gentle on our knees and our ankles. Very, very nice. Okay. Breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. As we hold Warrior One, we're going to hold a good portion of our body right here as we move to Warrior Two. So our knee and toe do not move at all. Just Step your left foot out, point it to the left side of the room, extend those arms front and back, and we're in warrior two, that knee didn't cave in, that foot didn't move at all, we're right there. I'm gonna to turn to the side now so you can see that. Okay, all right, so I've got that chair right to my end step. If I need it, it's right there with either one of my hands to give me that stability if I want it. If I want it. Yeah, take a nice big inhale and on the exhale, right forearm comes to the top of that right leg, back hand to the hip or, or to the sky, right angle pose. Now if we want something deeper, we can use that block on the ground, go to the inside part of the leg, just so we focus on our alignment of those shoulders, that they're stacked and those ribs are lifting up and that hip is lifting up toward the sky. Okay, a lot of moving of the arms, so I hope you're not following me and just keep doing one of these deals. Okay, I have to point around and, and cue that up. Okay, we can go overhead with it as well. There, I'll hold it. I'll stop moving. How about that? Excellent. Take a nice big inhale, and on that inhale, right hand floats up toward the sky, back hand on the leg or on our tailbone. Reach that right hand as high as you can. So we're reaching high, we're not reaching towards the back. Sometimes I see reverse warriors like this, like we're supposed to go in reverse. We're not going in reverse, we're just lifting high, okay? Just lifting high. And what we're focusing on is that stretch, that space we're creating through those ribs. And uh, we felt that on the other side in right angle. Now we're just going to rock and roll and we're going to flow through right angle and reverse warrior. So on the exhale, forearm to the leg, top hand overhead, bicep to that ear. And then inhale, right back to reverse warrior. And just follow your breath pattern. Inhales and exhales, exhales and inhales as we rock forward and back at your own pace. Keeping that front knee bent. If you need a little breather, you're welcome to straighten that leg. Remember, you got that chair right there, okay? Front hand on right angle, back hand on reverse warrior, just on that chair. Safe and stable, safe and stable. Feeling both sides of our body through those ribs. Good, the front and the back. One more time each, right angle and reverse. We'll find warrior two, find some stillness in warrior two. Lengthen that front leg, find some mercy on that front leg. Breathe in nice and big, exhale. Reach forward, reach as far as you can, let all that air out. And then when you can't reach any further, we tip over and just rest that front hand above or below the knee onto the leg, or we use that block that's right there. We can also use that back hand up toward the hip or sky on the chair that's nearby. Okay, there we go. And just think about those shoulders. 
trying to be perpendicular, trying to make our upper body through our hips perpendicular to the ground. Okay, now whether you look like that or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, whether it's perfect in the mirror, it doesn't matter. It needs to be perfect in the way it feels on your body. Okay, so focus more on that. Excellent. Let's come out of this warrior two. And we can just step forward and we're going to switch sides. We're going to switch sides. So the chair's on the right side, seat back facing in. Warrior one, left side. So that means our left foot's forward, right foot's back. Okay, all the things we talked about last time that kept us in that pose for so long. So now i got to come up with some new things to talk about this time to keep us in this pose even just as long. I'm kidding around. All right, so again, both feet on the ground, heels to toes, right foot now pointing off to the right side. Try and feel that pinky toe on that right foot. Okay, try and have that awareness, okay? We have that awareness from the crown of our head all the way to the tips of our toes in yoga. It's called body awareness. It's trying to sense uh, everything in every position of our body. Arms can be up from shoulders rolled down away from our ears. We can also just set that right hand on the chair if we need to. It's right there for our use. Just like that block is, it's optional, it's optional. Good stuff, that's probably good enough right here in Warrior One. We're gonna keep that left knee and toes right there. We're not moving them at all. We're pointing the right foot to the right side of the room, extend those arms, front and back. There we go, Warrior Two, okay? I'm gonna shift the chair and turn to the side so you can see that a little bit better. And we'll keep it going, left foot still forward. All right. Can still see the big toe and the second toe, but not the pinky toes. That knee is hovering right above the ankle, straight above it. Okay, now sometimes it may uh, come up a little bit, but there's a way to, you know, you can always step that back foot in if you want that support, okay? All right, if it uh, feels like it's too deep for you and those legs are spread out and it's like, well, to get there, it's too deep, then you walk the back foot in just a little bit, okay? All right, right angle pose. Take an inhale and then exhale. Left forearm to the top of that leg, backhand chair, hip or sky and overhead reaching high. Okay, we're gonna hold this for a little bit and breathe through this. Just trying to feel that sensation across our shoulder and down through our hips and the top side of our body. Good, again, trying to keep that knee hover with those legs nice and strong, that nice strong foundation. Perfect. On our next big inhale, breathe in as much as you can. Left hand reaches up nice and high, back hand to the chair, or on the leg, or on the tailbone behind you. Good. Just reach, reach and lift. How high can we reach those fingertips up towards the sky? Can we pick up those feathery clouds out of the sky? No, I don't see them. All I see is my ceiling, my basement ceiling right now. Okay. But we can breathe through this, breathe in, and now let's begin rocking and rolling. So on the exhale, we hinge forward, right angle pose, maybe reach overhead if that's comfortable. On the inhale, reach nice and high and just begin rocking back and forth at the pace of your breath. Exhale forward and inhale and reverse warrior. Trying to stay into that leg, you can see that I came out of my knee just a little bit to start lengthening my leg. Now we can do that if we need a little breather, that's fine. But if we want to get back to it, we try to have that good alignment knee above the ankle. So effectively, the lower body is not doing anything here. It's not moving. It's staying quiet. And that's good. One more time, right angle. One more time. Reverse. We'll come back to warrior two. Find some stillness. And then mercy time on that front leg. Breathe in nice and tall. Exhale, reach as far forward as we can. Reach, 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 and then tip over. Left hand above or below the knee, back hand to the chair or to the sky, and then it's just stack, stack, fingertip to fingertip. Try to feel that stretch across the top side of our body, right down to that hip bone, as if there's a string there lifting that hip up toward the sky. And of course, we're feeling something on the legs, right? Okay, still a soft bend in that right knee, uh, left knee. Okay, so we're not locking that joint at all. If we're locking that joint, then we're putting stress on that joint, and that's no good. We don't want to do that. All right. Exhale back to warrior two. 
and then let's step forward. Perfect. Okay, let's bring the chair right in front of us. I'm just going to go at an angle here. Okay, at an angle. Right in front of us, we're going to pyramid pose. Pyramid pose and then twisted triangle. Actually, it'd be better if I do it this way. So I'll do it that way. Okay, pyramid pose. Right foot forward, left foot back, both feet on the ground. Square up hips and shoulders toward that chair. Breathe in nice and tall, zip it up, and then exhale and hinge through those hips. Stand long, crown of our head to our tailbone. Stay in square, shoulders and hips. As we come down, let your body adapt. Come down slow, nice long exhale. Come on down, keep crawling down. Okay, we can either stop at that chair with those hands. We can set the elbows on the chair and rest our forehead on that chair, or come beyond the chair, hands on the block, or even fingertips to the ground. And wherever we decide to settle, we drop the crown of our head and relax around our spine. And breathe through this. And we'll take about three to four nice, long breaths. Let's take one more deep inhale, exhale. And then we're going to find twisted triangle. Left hand stays on that ground of the block with a chair. Right hand reaches up toward the sky or hip. My left knee wanted to bend there, try to, try to keep that leg exactly where it was at. And it just helps us to reach to the outside of that leg, the IT band, a little bit deeper stretch on the outside of that right. Okay. As we bring both hands down, keep the shoulders right above the hands, begin floating that left heel up off the ground, and then we'll find warrior three here, okay? We can start with spinal balance, reach that right hand forward, and if you want to experiment, go ahead and reach that left hand forward, and find warrior three. Both hands can be forward, they can be at heart center if that bothers your shoulders. They can be back by your hips, rolling those shoulders down and away from your ears. And just try to just visualize that you're making your body into a letter T with your leg being the trunk of that T. Two more breaths. Bring those hands back to the chair. If they're not already there, set both feet down. Excellent, excellent. Let's go ahead and switch sides now. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Okay. You didn't need to move, by the way. All right, left foot forward, right foot back, pyramid pose. Okay, squaring up, hips and shoulders, breathe in nice and tall, exhale and hinge. I don't know why I did that. It's, it's like a, I've been watching a lot of Medieval shows like they oh, you know, pyramid pose. Uh, yeah. All right, and then find that spot that works for you. I'm going to try some elbows on this side. And then allow that leg to adapt and maybe go a little bit deeper down to the ground. to the block. Let's take two more deep inhales and exhales here. And then right hand stays in position, left hand to the hip or to the sky. Twist triangle. Still able to breathe. So this is very similar to that windmill, except we got one leg back. It's a lot more intense on that front leg. And then exhale, bring both hands to the top of the chair. Right heel floats up towards the sky. Warrior three, warrior three. We can start with spinal balance. 
left hand forward and then release that right hand and experiment if we want to. You can also set both hands on the top of the chair and just experiment with playing around releasing the chair. Okay? All right. Or choose any other hand option you want. Two more breaths. And then exhale and bring both feet down. Perfect. All right. Let's bring that chair right in front of us. We're going to spin it around, okay, as if it was right back in original position, standing right behind it, standing balance pigeon. Standing balance pigeon. Right foot on the ground, right foot on the ground, left toes coming towards the shins. Left ankle coming above that right knee and then dropping that left knee back just a little bit. Okay, all right, just opening up that hip effectively. And then we'll sit back into it. Now if it's a challenge to go above the knee, go below the knee, you can set those toes down. You can even use that block and put those feet, uh, those toes on the block. And then you sit back, and then you sit back, okay? Just make sure it feels okay on the hip and on the knee. That's the key thing on that left knee. For me, I get a little bit of, I have a, a, a tightness into my lower back through my glutes, which actually connects right into my left knee. I'm sorry, my right knee. That's my right knee, but it's, it's the left according to you, okay, because I'm facing you, okay? And, uh, and so when I do this, I do feel it when I recognize that it's a muscle thing. And this helps to kind of free up that muscle a little bit and start to lengthen it. Okay, so I'm leaning on the chair. I guess this is what we're going to do. Um, we can also release it if we want to. Just for a moment, we'll take a couple breaths. Maybe releasing that chair and finding some balance. After all, it's called standing balance pigeon. Not standing leaning pigeon. That's right. Good. And our next exhale, we can come out of this. And we'll switch on to the other side. Left foot comes down, okay? Right foot, toes toward the shins. It just protects that knee. And then we'll bring that right ankle above that left knee. Drop that knee open, okay? Externally rotate, create that figure four shape. And then sit back, sit back as if we're trying to sit on this chair that we're facing. Whew, all right. Keep those toes toward the shins. It's okay to grab on to those ankles or that foot and just move it around. Just get into a better position if that feels good for you. Okay, you can see I'm not getting all the way down. It's hard to get all the way down into a single leg chair. And then a good stretch now out to, to the outside of the glutes and into the hips, some of those deep muscles. The piriformis, that be, that's becoming one of the most popular muscles that we didn't know we had. Okay, so when we think about anatomy, one of those deep muscles that sits right next to our sciatic nerve. And so when the piriformis gets a little bit angry and starts hitting that sciatic nerve, then it makes the whole side of our body real angry. And so a good stretch for that piriformis is right here, what we're doing. All right, next exhale. Oh, I'm sorry, let's balance it out a little bit. Let's take two breaths at least in the balance. Again, I'm just hanging out, chilling out, doing the lazy, lazy version of, you know, not the lazy, but the, the uh, not the balanced version. Okay, exhale and release. All right. Yeah, nothing wrong with doing that version. We're going to put the chairs back to original position, find our seats, and sit on down. Sit on down. Okay, right foot forward, left foot stays bent, isometric, forward fold, inhale up nice and tall, and exhale and fold. Just walk down that leg and find that spot where you feel something into that hamstring, and just stay right there, hands above or below the knees, avoid the knees, and just breathe. And then 
reason I was camping out on that, that pigeon, it just felt so good. The stretch felt good. And sometimes the stretch feels better than, than the desired balance. Exhale and release out. And that's quite all right. That's a great stretch. It's one of our 30 or 40 different versions of pigeons we can do. Left leg extended, inhale up, and exhale full. And so oftentimes I'll do that pose and I'll just be facing a wall. Okay, facing a wall and just set my hands on the wall. Just face that wall and hold that just to help to open up. Get a deep stretch into the glutes and hips. Still maintaining those deep breaths, regardless if we're moving or not. Through these isometrics, we won't move. We'll just hold and breathe. Hold and breathe. Good. And then gently, let's come out of this. Excellent. Take that right leg above, over our left leg, cross those legs, left hand to the outside of that right leg, and right hand to the chair, stay tall, rotate and twist. So that right hand can stay right there. You can take your right forearm, even up to your elbow, and just give a little bit of a nudge, a little bit of pressure. Okay, we're not trying to jam ourselves into this. We're not trying to, to turn and twist until we hear a pop. Okay, it's not like at the chiropractor where they're gonna, you know, they know what they're doing, okay? I mean, we know what we're doing too with our own bodies. We know what feels right and doesn't. But, uh, but to jam your body into this position and go too far with it is not, not the best of ideas. Not the best of ideas. Good. Let's come back to center. Same thing, other side. Cross that left over, over right, right hand or forearm to the outside of that leg. Left hand to the chair, turn and stay tall. Exhale back, front and center. Okay, I'm just gonna turn to the side just for a moment. Camel pose, camel pose. Stand tall, make fists into our hands and place them right into the small of our back, okay? Draw those elbows toward each other, shoulder blades toward each other, and just look up, look up and arch back, pressing your hips forward, pushing those hands into those hips. Okay, a little bit of a hip opener, but a lot of a chest and a shoulder stretch. So think about your heart lifting up toward the sky. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, retracting those shoulder blades. Or squeeze those elbows together to help retract those shoulder blades. Good. Now offset the arch of that back. Just lay down on the front of your legs and give those legs a little hug. Seated child's pose. Come on out and sit all the way back into our chairs. It's time for final relaxation, Shavasana. Allow ourselves to find that comfortable position. If you're following along in the playlist, the Shavasana song is called Better, an instrumental. It's about fifth from the bottom. And just allow ourselves to relax. Relax those hands onto our laps. Relax those feet onto the floor. Shoulders rolled down away from our ears. Relax our face and perhaps our eyelids and our eyes. And just for a few moments, let's find some stillness. Let's stop moving. Let's stop doing stuff. And allow that breath to just become a natural everyday breath, something we don't have to think about. Let it go back to 
just its own pattern. And as we find that stillness, try to feel that stillness. Try to feel the effects of your practice reverberating throughout your body. See if you can notice that. Does it feel like you've done something in the past 45 minutes? Does it feel like you've touched your body from the tips to your toes? You feel more calm and relaxed while knowing that we also did something physically good for our bodies. If you allow yourself to invest in yourself, to care for yourself, to allow yourself to be open for self-improvement, self-discovery, Allow yourself to provide that trust of where you're at today so that the way we treated ourselves is with respect and worth. Allowing ourselves to find that acceptance, that acceptance of where we're at right now. Allowing ourselves to then celebrate and find gratitude for where we're at right now. Our closing message. Be where you are not. Be where you are not. And where you think you should be. That doesn't make sense. Let me give you another one. I didn't realize who I was until I stopped being who I wasn't. That one's better. I kind of the love and light in you as it's also within me. Namaste. Let me read that last one again. Be where you are, comma, it makes a difference, not where you think you should be. There we go. All good now. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.